Some of the first polling data is out, but who leads in the showdown that will become the Republican presidential primary process leading up to 2024? Yes, it's 2023, but Donald Trump has announced and challengers are being named. Let me explain. Presidential campaigns are never ending. We know that at this point. And so we are all about what will be 2024 and who will be on the ticket for both the Democrats and Republicans. So who is leading both in the polls and actually showing leadership? Because we know for the Democrats, it's not Joe Biden. He can't even follow. That man is scared. I've seen this look before with toddlers when they get up in front of a group and are supposed to be singing or dancing. Terrified. Look at his hand. It's clenched harder than the lock on Jeffrey Epstein's client list. But remember, Joe said he grew up in the black church. You know, after he went to Catholic Mass. And let's say one thing to rest. I may be a practicing Catholic. I used to go to 730 Mass every morning in high school and then in college before I went to the black church. Not a joke. Andy knows this. Sadly, there was no Andy. Joe was just pointing at air. Anyway, before we get into it, let's get to today's question. Who do you think is leading for the Republicans and their hopes for the 2024 presidential election? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And then if you could, share the video so we can create our very own polling data. Because when it comes to the early polls... It appears Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is topping former President Donald Trump 42 to 30 percent. The University of New Hampshire Granite State Poll was released last week asking likely voters in the New Hampshire 2024 Republican presidential primary who they would vote for. Former U.N. ambassador under Donald Trump and two-term governor of South Carolina Nikki Haley comes in third with 8 percent. And then New Hampshire's own Governor Chris Sununu came in fourth with 4 percent. Yes, this is but one poll. And yes, it is a very early poll. And yes, it is from Little New Hampshire that, for the record, does have the first in the nation primary, which is actually written into its own state law, so it will always be first. Fun fact. And even though it is Little New Hampshire, the results are significant, particularly for independents and gaining momentum among them. And that is likely why Trump appears defensive already in that he decided to yet again attack DeSantis when this poll came out. Trump is the only one who has announced he is running, but he's trying to keep it that way. In just another attack on DeSantis, Trump told the Associated Press after his recent speech while campaigning in South Carolina that if DeSantis opposed Trump, it would be a great act of disloyalty and that Trump is the reason DeSantis got his first election to become governor. And then Trump made more comments while on his plane. So Ron would have not been governor if it wasn't for me, and that's okay. Uh, And uh, number one, he wouldn't have gotten the nomination. And number two, he wouldn't have beaten uh, his Democrat opponent. So then when I hear he might run, you know, I consider that very disloyal, but it's not about loyalty. But to me, it is. It's always about loyalty. Okay, then. Here's where some feathers may get ruffled. Prepare yourselves. Ron DeSantis, running for president, says nothing about not being loyal to Donald Trump. No one need be loyal to the Donald, a 76-year-old man who's dabbled with Will he or won't he run, dating back to the late 1980s and continuing all the way until his election in 2016 and loss in 2020. And I'll put my thoughts out there now. Feel free to disagree wholeheartedly. But wouldn't it be nice to have maybe a combo of politicians who aren't in their septuagenarian and or octogenarian years and who have kids too young or not interested in being directly influential in their parents' jobs that affect millions of people? or even old enough to be snorting crack or Parmesan cheese, taking videos of it with hookers, losing laptops, and oh yeah, using daddy's power to gallivant around the world, picking up bundles of cash. Wouldn't it just be nice? Go ahead and disagree in the comments. Prove me wrong. Trump's nervousness isn't without warrant, even in just looking at the change of opinion among New Hampshireans, New Hampshireites, I don't know what they're called. Anyway, since July 2021, there has been a significant reversal of opinion. Trump's star is fading and DeSantis's is burning strong. 
And the thing is, DeSantis can easily point to things he's done at present to show leadership because he's the governor. He's not under investigation. He doesn't have a ton of baggage. And he says things like this. Over the past few years, as so many states in our country grinded their citizens down, we in Florida lifted our people up. We reject this woke ideology. We seek normalcy, not philosophical lunacy. We will not allow reality, facts, and truth to become optional. We will never surrender to the woke mob. Florida is where woke goes to die. That was from DeSantis's inauguration ceremony, which he had because he won his second term to the governor's office by more than one and a half million votes over former governor Charlie Chris. And that was just after he won his first election by about 32,000 votes. So in four years, he went from just making the cut to absolutely destroying the competition by luck or by action. In just the past two weeks, DeSantis showed his intent to lead, especially when it comes to education of the next generations. He explained his intent to bar public high schools from offering AP African American Studies courses because it lacks educational value. This course on black history, what are one of, what's one of the lessons about? Queer theory. Now, who would say that an important part of black history is queer theory? That is somebody pushing an agenda on our kids. And so when you look to see they have stuff about intersectionality, abolishing prisons, that's a political agenda. And so we're on, that's the wrong side of the line for Florida standards. We believe in teaching kids uh, facts and how to think, but we don't believe they should have an agenda imposed on them. I don't see a problem with his commentary. And now the college board basically admitted that it put a whole bunch of garbage into the course because it just took out of the course Black Lives Matter, the queer experience, and black feminism. Yes to that. And yes to what DeSantis wants to do regarding child rapists and the implementation of capital punishment. And so we are going to be exploring ways uh, to facilitate uh, some capital uh, trials if you have the worst of the worst. And these people don't care. Uh, they are unrepentant. Uh, they don't care about these children. They will do whatever they can to satiate themselves uh, at the expense of very, very vulnerable people. Uh, so I believe that, that uh, if you have somebody that's done that, you know, I believe the only appropriate punishment that would be commensurate to that uh, would be capital. Yes, sir. And that extends to what could have been possible in the Parkland massacre at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in 2018 when innocent lives were stolen by a shooter who just received a life sentence. Many people in South Florida remember you had the killer at the Parkland massacre. Obviously, he was guilty. Why it took so long to even get to the penalty phase you know, is beyond me. He gets up there and then you have like one juror that did not want to do capital punishment. And that was requirement was really based off an old Florida Supreme Court decision that has since been overturned. And so you shouldn't have it to where if you're already convicted and you did the crime, whether to apply capital, one juror should not be able to veto that. And I don't think justice was served in that case. Also included in DeSantis's agenda are adding penalties to address the fentanyl crisis, beefing up the bail laws, and just strengthening law enforcement overall. Which would be nice since until now, and there being two contenders for the presidency being from Florida, the main national news stories are always about Florida man, the same kinds of Florida man that will be affected by DeSantis's law and order agenda. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Seriously, look up a few Florida man stories and then let me know your favorites. Like these. Florida man trapped in unlocked closet for two days. Florida man killed by alligator while hiding from cops. Florida man desperate for ride to Hooters calls 911. And then there's Florida man tries to steal wreck of ribs by stashing it in his pants. Really? That could have been one giant story. As it goes, Florida man desperately needed a ride to Hooters so he could steal a rack of ribs. And then he was hiding in an unlocked closet because he was hiding from the cops. 
But then an alligator found him, you know, because the scent of the ribs, and then the alligator killed him. What a wild ride. And we're about to get back on a wild ride because, like I said earlier, the 2024 presidential election is already moving into full force. The question remains, who is leading and how are they leading? We will continue watching. As for you, I hope you lead with your Fs, faith, family, and friends. And if you happen to forget that, just get the shirt that says it by visiting freedomproject.com store. Until next time, stay healthy, America.